lot of people actually view technology as separate from people, but technology is actually supernatural because it's something that we have created. It's something that wouldn't exist without us making. So technology in itself was inherently very human. What's your name? A lot of people uh, look at things like robots and say, well, gee, this social robot's gonna you know, take away my relationship with people and in the future it's not gonna be good for that sort of thing. Um, but we actually can point back to some examples like the dog, which was bred from a wolf to be a companion for humans. So I think there are a lot, of, a lot of history we can look back on and actually see that this is not a very unnatural thing for us to do. This is uh, gonna be first in a series of robots with personality disorders. And right now I'm working with uh, ultrasonic sensors to detect where people are standing in front of it so the knife can be pointed towards them. I may transition over to something like facial recognition, so camera following people's faces. I mean, there's, there's the, the morbid side, which I think is easier for our brains to go to. But sometimes if you, if you look at it another way, it could be kind of funny in a comical way. Um, it just depends how the individual person looks at it. And again, I try not to even put a positive or negative spin on anything, uh, if I can avoid it, um, to leave space for people to have their own, their own opinion. These were scissors that were designed to be activated using EEG headsets. Uh, so this was at a, uh, an opening uh, in New York where the, uh, the people that were cutting the ribbon uh, concentrated and actually cut the ribbon with their mind. It was reading people's brain waves and, and once they became calm and meditative, the, uh, the motor closed and, and cut the ribbon. I actually can't really draw or paint or do any of the traditional type things. Um, so I actually don't sketch things out a lot of times. I do things like the prototypes that I showed you before. Um, and those prototypes allow me to, to quickly create something. And by having an engineering background, I can just pull from things very fast and make that and, and have that idea validated or find that idea is bad and move on to the next thing. So this, this is a blab droid. The blab droids were created to be the world's first documentarians. And right now they're traveling around the world making the world's first documentary shot and directed entirely by robots. So these go around and ask people questions and record their answers. Hello? Kind of GoPro level sort of uh, a video that we get out of there. And yeah, they have sensors so they roam around on the floor trying to acquire people. When you pick him up, he starts talking to you. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? If I could have one superpower, you know, I think I would like eternal life. Some of my stuff is more obviously anthropomorphic than other things. The robots obviously have faces and, and the drum has, has, a, has a heartbeat. But there are other things like the You Are My Sunshine piece, which doesn't have any sort of recognizable limbs or faces. Besides the fact that it has a purpose and that purpose can, can wind down, that purpose could not be met, and even the fact that its purpose and goal is not being met creates some sort of emotional reaction in us that, that makes us compare it to our lives. Machines have the ability to pull out the best of the worst in people. A lot of times technology can be a mirror for ourselves and a way for us to investigate who we are and, and what makes us human. <laughs> this one's tired. Let me get another one. <laughs>